Hey, Dr. Michael Rashik of Neurogenomics making another video update and this time I wanted to talk about the last COVID-19 Q&A event number four that we had recently. It was a lot of fun. We had people from all over the world assembled and basically apart from uh, having question and answer period where you can ask any question you want and I attempt to answer to the best of my ability. What is super fun and super interesting about this particular event is the type of scientific literature that was presented by the audience to me for uh, questions and investigation and it was really cool information. Some of it was literally bombshell information and that's what I wanted to share with you in this particular video. So, and, and a big, big bombshell information is the fact that CDC finally, finally admitted that natural immunity protection is better than vaccination itself. It took a long time to finally get there. They've previously claimed otherwise. We covered that in video number 17, I believe. So it's good that they come around because this is one of those mysteries of the, of the current pandemic management is is in here in North America is the degree to which we simply ignore the impact of natural immunity. So what did they present in this uh, in this particular summary? So that's and this was based on infections found in both California and the New York states. So very large data set. And uh, the numbers are just astonishing. So let's and this is particularly for the Delta wave. So we still don't know what might be happening with the Omicron. And remember, Omicron is the immune escape variant. So we've presented uh, previously a video where uh, I believe it was video number 21 showing that Omicron might have a higher likelihood of, uh, of reinfection. Nevertheless, let's go uh, with the data that was presented in this particular data set. So in comparison to people who were unvaccinated, if you were vaccinated but you've never been infected, your likelihood of being infected was five to six fold lower. The number depends on which state was being looked at. But here comes the big change. If you're vaccinated and you've been previously infected, your likelihood of being in reinfected was 20 to 33 times lower in comparison to just unvaccinated individual who's never been infected. So huge difference. And now if you were unvaccinated and you've been previously infected, your likelihood to be reinfected was 15 to 29 times lower in comparison to just unvaccinated individuals. So huge difference in terms of what natural uh, immunity post-infection can do for you. In fact, they summarized it in a really interesting manner where they said natural immunity protection. If you are unvaccinated and you've been infected, you your immune protection was about two to three fold better than if you were just vaccinated. And if you were vaccinated and you've been previously infected, your protection in comparison to vaccinated was about three to four times better. So huge, huge difference. Now, time of infection was irrelevant. Once you were infected in the duration of the study, you had continuous protection. And then also, it was the independent of which vaccine you had. Once you were infected, it didn't matter with what you've been previously vaccinated with, the protection was equivalent. However, prior to infection, different vaccines gave you different levels of protection in comparison to unvaccinated. So the best vaccine that gave you the best protection in comparison oh, to unvaccinated was was Moderna, followed by Pfizer, and then finally with Johnson & Johnson in, in, in the end for the ones that they were comparing. Now, when it comes to hospitalizations, the impact was even bigger. It was just astonishing. So let's go by those numbers. If you were vaccinated individual and you've never been infected before and in comparison to those who are unvaccinated and never been infected you had about 20 times lower likelihood of being hospitalized in comparison to unvaccinated person who's never been infected now if you've been vaccinated and then you've been infected on top of that your likelihood of being hospitalized dropped to 58 times lower in comparison to unvaccinated individual. And if you are unvaccinated individual and you've been infected, 
your likelihood of being infected again in comparison to unvaccinated person who's never been infected was 55 times lower. So for those who, of you who are worried about unvaccinated individuals, I think the first question one should be asking is, have you been infected previously? Because it's basically this, this study, and it's not the first of its kind. We've known this for a long time, that natural immunity is extremely powerful. But that should be your question, is don't worry so much about the vaccination status as much as uh, maybe whether a person's been previously infected or not, especially with perhaps what's happening with the, with the Omicron. And the paper summarized it with a very interesting sentence that said, surviving a previous infection protects against a reinfection and related hospitalization. So there you go huge final admission from CDC it took a long time that we have it now the other papers I want to go uh, through them really quick as well and uh, first was um, myocarditis this was a very interesting paper because we've heard about it this heart inflammation we kind of know the stats already but what was interesting about this is that the data was pulled from various databases. this is a, a controversial database because uh, the, it's claimed that it's unverified but in this case the data that was pulled on myocarditis was indeed verified by CDC and out of almost 2,000 cases that have been reported when the study was being performed, approximately 1,600 of those cases were, were confirmed by CDC to be true. All right, so and it's those cases that were then used for subsequent uh, analysis uh, of statistics and basically here are the likelihoods which are stratified based on age group of, of, uh, of males. So. 20 to 15 year old year old boys approximately 70 boys are affected for a million doses uh, provided if you are 16 to 17 year old boy approximately 100 boys are impacted for a million doses that are being provided and if you are young men ages 18 to 24 your likelihood was about 55 of them would have uh, experienced myocarditis per million doses so there's uh, your summary on that the next paper i want to talk about was uh, a really interesting paper that showed that even mild infection of SARS-CoV-2 virus, so one that produces mild symptoms, could actually causing dysregulation, um, neuronal dysregulation in your brain and causing what really amounts to brain fog. And what they were able to show in this particular study that, that uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection can cause inflammation in the brain, can cause neuronal dysregulation and activation of my, microglial cells which is a type of immune cells that reside inside brains and together effectively one of the symptoms observed is the fact that the myelin sheet is being uh, compromised this is the type of substance that is covering your neurons and protects your, your neurons and what the authors are claiming based on the study of uh, brain samples from COVID-19 patients as well as animal models they were studying it in mice they were saying that this is very similar to what is observed in cancer patients and their cognitive impairment what is post chemotherapy treatments which is what is colloquially referred as chemo brain so it appears that SARS-CoV-2 infection can create similar impact and if you were wondering how that effect of brain fog might be occurring well, they didn't tell, they didn't describe how this might be occurring. They were just simply describing what is what is happening inside the brain. Now, the final paper discussed how clots might be happening using platelets, and platelets uh, release uh, a certain chemical chemicals called platelet factor four. And what these authors in this particular paper showed that antibodies that are produced against platelet factor four can also bind spike protein now this is controversial in itself because this has also been shown not to take place by another study but what these authors also showed that for the first time that spike protein could be binding to that platelet factor 4 chemical directly now antibodies remember antibodies they have this y shape right so then the arms of the y are the are the segments of the antibody that are attaching themselves to to say the viral component and then those arms are connected by a stalk now that stalk is referred to as FC region and platelets and other immune cells as well they have receptors against this region 
against this FC region. So platelets could be binding to antibodies through that FC region as well those antibodies could be binding to the spike protein and the uh, platelet factor 4 and collectively they could be amassing everything together so creating a uh, well basically a clot and there is and there is your trouble so there is the literature fantastic literature that was presented to to us in the last COVID-19 Q&A event now COVID-19 Q&A event number five is coming up so definitely check it out these are getting more and more fun and I'm so impressed that regular people are reading science papers yes they they perhaps need certain help but it's it's just awesome to see that just regular population is digging more and more into science that's fantastic now if uh, for the first 10 of you who will subscribe to our newsletter we'll give you uh, free tickets to the COVID-19 Q&A number five the link to the newsletter subscription is is in the description below and we'll have more tickets available as well so don't worry if you if you didn't get it and the way it works is that we basically collect questions from the audience and we answer those questions and then it's open floor and anyone can ask any questions we have a discussion and i'm definitely looking forward to more scientific literature being presented by the audience because that's great all right if you like this type of video give us a like subscribe to the, to, to the channel hey drop us a question below uh, we do try to screen a lot of this information it's a lot of work Forgiveness for not being able to answer everyone is just not possible, but we definitely give it a try and then share the video That's a big one. Obviously by sharing we get more views and then we can uh, Grow and create more content like this for you. So we're looking forward to seeing you guys the next time. Bye everyone